Okay, this is uh, section 7.4 and it's on hypothesis test for the population proportion P. And we'll be using the 1P Excel sheet to do this. Uh, first of all, if uh, N times P and N times Q are greater than or equal to 5, then it's a nor then you have a normal distribution. It's approximately normally distributed and you can run the problem. Some problems from this section will just say, can you run this problem or can't you? Is it approximately normal or not? And if it wasn't approximately normal, it would say here, sample size too small. So let's say, for example, let's say, uh, just making one up here, if this is 0.01 and you sampled, let's say, uh, 30 people, Believe it or not, your NP is less than 5. If you take these two and multiply them together, you don't get something that's greater than or equal to 5, so the test cannot be run. That means that the data is not normally distributed, not approximately normal, so you can't run it. You can get some questions just based on that. Happens with low probability type of problems like a, a P testing a purport, uh, claim proportion of like a very small value like 0.01 or a real high value, let's say 0.99, guess what? And Q now is not uh, less than 5, so the test can't be run. Uh, usually they run. Uh, when, when I ask you to run a test, they run. But some questions just ask, can you run it or not run it? And that's just based on this decision right here. The test cannot be run. It tells you your answer right here, and it tells you why. Now let's actually do a problem that uh, it asks. In this particular problem, it says... A company industry spokesperson claims that over 95% of Americans either own a cellular phone or have a family member who does. In a random sample, in a random survey of 1,000 Americans, 960 said they or a family member owned a cell phone. Test the spokesperson's claim at the 0.05 alpha level, and what can you conclude? Well, they're claiming that over 95% own or a family member owns a cell phone, and I would say that's probably true. Uh, but let's see if it's true or not. So they sampled 1,000 people, and 960 of them said they or a family member own a uh, cell phone. So 960 out of 1,000 is 96%. Now, 96% is greater than 95%, but is it significantly greater than 95%? Okay, 96% is greater than 95%, but is it significantly greater than 95%? What does that mean? Well, it means that this test statistic has to land in the rejection region. Now, let's go ahead and do the problem. It's actually a pretty easy problem to do on Excel. It says to run at the 0.05 alpha level. We're doing a right tail test because it said more than 95% of uh, people or a family member own a cell phone. So that's uh, alpha level 0.05. Here's the claim percentage, the 95%. Here's your sample size of 1,000, and here's how many successes we had, 960. It automatically calculates your sample percentage, no problem there. Just take 960 divided by 1,000, you get 96%. Is this significantly greater than 95%? Well, 96% is awfully close to 95% to be say it's significantly greater than 95%. In fact, it's not significantly greater than 95% uh, because we can see jumping down to the bottom, uh, we do not reject the no hypothesis. We do not reject this. So we're unable to show at the 0.05 alpha level, we are unable to show that the percentage of people that either they or a family member own a cell phone is significantly greater than 95%. Um, I can also see that that's the case, that I'm not going to be able to reject this null hypothesis because my p-value right here is greater than this alpha level. p-value, 0.07, is greater than your alpha level, 0.05, and you wouldn't be able to reject the null hypothesis. Also, my test statistic did not fall in the rejection region. This is what determines the rejection region, then 1.6449 or about 1.65, and we can see that, well, this doesn't have the picture uh, on this sheet, but uh, 1.64 is farther to the right than the test statistic, so the test statistic doesn't fall into the rejection region. The critical value determines the rejection region. Let me go back to the 1mu sheet here a second, and uh, the, uh, see, the uh, right tail test, we're talking about a this would be the critical value, 1.6 something up here, and I don't know if this one is 1.6, but I can make it 1.6 pretty quick. Let me just make this 30 or more here to make it approximately normal, and uh, let's change this to 0.05, and we have the same critical value, 1.64. So 1.64, that's your critical value right there, and your test statistic on that last problem was about 1.4 something. So here's 1.64, and our test statistic was about 1.4 something. So let's go back and look at it. I don't have the picture here, but your 1.64, 0.04, 0.05, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04
is uh, what well, would be shading to the right in red, and 1.45 is less than this, so you do not reject it. That's why I kind of like p-values better. I mean, it's really clear cut. If uh, your p-value is less than your alpha, you reject. It's not, so you don't reject. So that's all there is to this problem. Now the other question is, what would be your uh, summary at the most significant alpha level? Well, we can't reject it at 0.05, so there's no need to check any smaller alpha level, but we do have one alpha level left to check. That's 0.1. Now, at the 0.1 alpha level, will you reject it? Well, you should know this without even changing it. You will reject it because this won't change. Your p-value won't change. So 0 0.0734 is less than 0 0.1, so we will reject the, at the 0.1 alpha level. Let's try it. And we get reject because if your p-value is less than your alpha, you reject. So if somebody said summarize this at the most significant alpha level, we would say at the 0.1 alpha level, I was able to show that the percentage of uh, either people or uh, uh, that either own a cell phone or have a family member that own a cell phone is significantly greater than 95% because now 96% is significantly greater than 95% at the 0.1 alpha level. There's a 7% chance that I'm making the wrong decision, but I've allowed myself up to a 10% chance of rejecting the null hypothesis when I shouldn't. So uh, since the p-value is less than my alpha, that's why I reject the null hypothesis. So that's the most significant alpha level. Okay, uh, we'll continue on with this section in the next video.